I love it when I come up on a comic book that really just shocks me in every good way. It's something I wasn't expecting, something that I did not expect to enjoy, but I do enjoy. The guys over at Ghost Machine Comics are really putting out some quality stuff. Now, it's put out under the Image Comics Publishing Company, and I picked up, I'd been seeing uh, this book for a while, but I picked up Geiger. Now, this is from the same people who brought you Rook Exodus, which I actually picked up a physical copy of Rook Exodus number five. I cannot find uh, one through four. As soon as I can find those, I'm going to pick up those as well. But I picked up Geiger. Didn't know if I was going to enjoy it. The way these guys are telling stories, it really works for me. It's comic book titles that I wouldn't typically be interested in, but I am. So we're going to go over to ghostmachine.com. You see the character. It says, uh, out past the poison wasteland lives a man, uh, even the night crawlers and organ people fear. Some name him Joe Glow. Others call him the Meltdown Man, but his name is Geiger. And this is, like I said, it's done really well. The creator, Jeff Johns, uh, a comic book staple, if you're familiar with his work. Gary Frank's the artist. Brad Anderson is the colorist. Rob Lay is the letterer. And this book is good. So I want to really just get into a review of the book. I decided that I'm going to try to do this more often. I'm going to try to uh, go into full on reviews of different books. And for this one, the way these books are done, I just really believe that these books warrant theme music. So that's what I'm going to do for this book. And we are talking about Geiger number one. I enjoyed this read. So the opening scene, page one, the book opens, uh, of all things, to the clicking of a Geiger counter. And there's these two dudes in this barren wasteland. Um, this appears to be a dystopian future. Um, there was something called the unknown war that led to this. Uh, and there's now, a f and, and there's now a fear of what is referred to as the night walkers and the organ people. The two characters talk about, uh, the man referred to by many names that we went over, um, in that page there from ghost machine comics. And one of the men ask about this man and he asks about the, the backstory. So then you flip over and the other gentleman begins into the story of this character. You see the scene. It's a starry night. What are they looking for? Hmm. Who knows? But the name of the character, the main character is Tariq Geiger. How crazy is that? All right, so now they go into a little bit of the backstory. And you open to a random random news reports of war and various other events and then reports of tracking system triggering incoming alerts. No one knows who fired first. There's the you see the man screaming at his family to enter this bunker. Apparently he was a prepper and you know, with all the stuff that's been going on in the world today, preppers are actually looking like some of the smartest people in the room. But anyway, he's a prepper. Uh, he's preparing his family to get into this bunker. He's telling them, all right, we have to get on this. We have to get in here. No time to waste. And their dog is barking. The son notices the dog barking and he's like, hey, dad what's going on why is the dog barking and they happen to be in uh boulder city nevada 
and you find out on the next page the reason why the dog was barking is there was a missile getting ready to take off so somebody fired a missile at the u.s and now we're returning fire a nuclear war has started and i like the way this book covers the fact that in a nuclear war these things will devolve into chaos very quickly it will take no time and you're about to see exactly how that how this plays out so they're getting ready to get into this bunker right this is what they're preparing for the man screaming at his family to get in uh the dog's barking there's an exchange they notice that hey there's this uh missile in the sky this is why the dog's barking so one of his neighbors shows up in classic dystopian fashion everyone knows who the person is who has the bunkers or who has prepped who has the food the neighbors know this dude's a prepper so they come to take his bunker he yells at his family to close the bunker now before this i meant to mention him and his wife were going back and forth about whether they have enough supplies and he was confirming to her hey we have everything we need do not worry about it and she says well what about your medicine like that's going to be a problem you can't survive down here without your medicine forever so clearly he has some kind of sickness what it is not really mentioned and so now the neighbors show up and they're like hey uh yeah we're gonna take this place that you're calling home uh this new uh this bunker that you've built so the neighbors shoot him in the ankle so now he can't go anywhere he screams at his wife to close the bunker there's a man trying to protect his family he's not trying to have any of this he's like close the bunker so of course reluctantly she closes the bunker and once that, once that bunker is closed the neighbors can't get in now like there's nothing they can do about it so they threaten him they're like yo open this bunker or we are going to kill you now this man wants to protect his family Tariq Geiger isn't it? it's kind of I, I like the fact that they named the character Tariq Geiger right you know anything about a Geiger counter I'm not gonna get into all of that but anyway so the the neighbors threaten him they shoot his dog he's yelling at his family to close the bunker and they finally close the bunker so the neighbors think they're gonna force him to open a bunker now if you're a man that's out to protect your family it does not matter what these neighbors say you're not opening this bunker it's not happening these neighbors can get mad they can say whatever they want that bunker will absolutely stay closed and if i was him i would have done the same thing i'd have been like look you're just gonna have to kill me because this bunker is staying open they shoot his dog they shoot his dog oh man you shoot a man's dog you, you've gone too far but he's protecting his family he does not want his family to die he will sacrifice himself for the sake of his family i like books that tell stories like this you don't get this too much anymore for several reasons but they venture into this man who's going to protect his family and now the nuclear explosion comes and and i just want to say this whoever is doing um the the editing for ghost machine whoever's going over these books doing the colors and everything this is some great art and it is some great colors these dudes are really doing a good job just from what i read in rook exodus and what i'm reading in this book right here man this is amazing so now uh we are 20 years in the future um and the men uh are afraid to be in boulder city these men that are that are that are in this uh this gear i'll get into the gear in a little bit but they're afraid to be in the city or one of the men at least is afraid to be in boulder city and he wants to leave because he believes all the horror stories he's He's heard about the Oregon people and the night walkers. And he's like, yo, I don't want to be here. And there have been stories of 
this man who glows they've all heard this story but the other two men are like yeah whatever we don't believe this we're not we're not having any of this so they have that back and forth and then in the next scene they notice this a bunker it looks like a small bunker with the doors blown off and there's something in it but then they turn around and adjacent to that there is something else well what is this something else that they've now seen what they see is the entrance of another bunker but there seems to be this compacted metal trash neatly put together around this bunker what is this exactly now if you see a structure like this they've been sent out by what they referred to by the way as the king so at in classic fashion and look i think this is actually close to reality if the world devolves into chaos what you will have is factions people individuals that will take charge and take control i don't think that's something that you'll be able to get away from i think this is just the nature of the beast this is just the way humans move you see how fast things devolved in the beginning of this book i don't think that's far from reality so anyway they they see this bunker it's huge um there appears to be this compacted metal trash of some sort surrounding this bunker neatly put away and they're trying to figure out okay what is this what is going on here so they're going to try to pry their way into this bunker they want to get in they're trying to get supplies they were sent on a recon mission but a man appears who now this man doesn't have on mop gear and they find this weird now for those who were never in the military mop gear that stands for um mission oriented protective posture so this is the gear the ppe personnel protective equipment that you would put on if there was a biological chemical or some kind of nuclear disaster so that's what these men got have on and they're looking at this dude and they're like yo he does not have on mop gear there's a there's an exchange back and forth between them and what they say is because he tells them they're trespassing they should leave so they're like yo if we're trespassing you should have put a sign up now first thing they're bugging if i'm these dudes i'm like this is a nuclear fallout zone this dude is hopping around here like he's superman and he doesn't have mop gear on i don't think i want no problems with this dude <laughs> they're not really thinking really clearly in this moment that that would be the moment where i'm like ah uh, yeah i think it's time for us to leave he jumps down now these cats clearly are terrified how's he surviving he has no gear on he seems to be a physical specimen what the heck is going on at this moment so this is when the absolute beat down begins he he is beating these dudes down they should have left when they had the opportunity before this beat down and then he tells them you want a sign i'll put a sign up and it'll be neon he starts to glow so now they find out yo these stories that we've heard this is true this is actually true so he gets them up out of there they run of course they're afraid um then this dude is glowing like i said i like the fact that they his real name is actually tariq geiger so there's this two-headed wolf that shows up this black wolf now apparently he has somehow he's talking with the wolves i'm not exactly sure what's going on with that now here's what i wonder in ghost machine comics i'm assuming i don't know this because i'm not well versed in ghost machine comics i've just gotten into this i'm assuming that the events that happen on geiger maybe have something to do with why the people on that other planet in rook exodus left the planet maybe it's disconnected maybe it has nothing to do with each other but maybe it does i don't know somebody in the comments let me know if you're really familiar with uh ghost machine comics 
Anyway, these dudes go running terrified. Somehow he's talking with this two-headed wolf. I don't know exactly what's going on, what kind of connection they have. The wolf doesn't talk, but clearly there's some kind of inaudible message that he's getting and he's responding. Or maybe he's just delusional because he's been out there for a while. So he's eating. The wolves are eating. And he wants to read a book, but he's like, I've read all of these books over and over again and nobody writes anymore this is a dystopia of course nobody writes anymore people are just trying to survive so uh he goes to the bunker and he is talking through the bunker as if his family can hear him obviously they can't hear him they don't know he's out there but he's protecting his family and apparently he will protect them to his dying breath if he has to it's a hero story. So now the scene switches to what appears to be this king that the other three gentlemen were talking about. And he's having an interaction with one of his subjects, right? Funny, the world was civilized. And well, I'm not saying that having a, a king or a noble isn't necessarily civilized, but the world was beyond that. It devolves and now the world gets back to this thing. So there's a gentleman that comes to talk with the king about the recent events. And there's a, there's different factions. One of the factions is Safari Bob. And I guess there was some kind of pact they made that they would not go into this wasteland where Boulder City is. It was, I guess it was agreed upon. I guess maybe he made some kind of agreement from what I'm gathering reading the book with Geiger. Like Geiger, he had a run in and Geiger was like, look, you're all good. Just don't come back here. Yeah, he, he's got that whole place on lock. So, yeah. Why didn't the nuclear explosion kill Tariq? That's what I would like to know. Was it the fear? Was it something to do with whatever sickness he had? I'm curious to see how they tell this story. Now I want to buy some more of these books anyway. We find out that this king is a pompous little brat. His father was king before him, and now he's king, and he wants to make a name for himself. So he gets a report that these three men came back and was like, uh, yeah, this Geiger guy, yeah, he's kind of really a thing, and we saw him, and they're terrified. So he, delusions of grandeur, wants to go slay Geiger. He wants to be the one that brings uh geiger's head he feels like this is going to separate him from his father and make him the man and then in the next scene you find out that this is actually las vegas and of course everything is done inside uh what do you call it hermetically sealed no doubt so they don't get any of the effects from the nuclear fallout and if they go outside more than likely they use the mop gear that's what it's looking like so this is an interesting book, man. This is like that. That was a good opening. So you find out a little bit about the landscape of the book and how things are set up. So you have these different factions. I'm trying to bring it in. Um, into view. You have Nero uh, on the outs. Do calls himself Nero. That's crazy. You have Safari Bob and you have uh, Milan uh way it says way the craziest of them all milan way i guess that's her name and you have this dude over here it looks kind of like a bum they called him Goldbeard, the third or fourth there's a question mark and you have bonnie burden uh it says smart and dangerous you have the king the prince is uh, is king what happened to the old king where is the queen? So, of course, he's the, the son of the first king, and he's a little pompous. Then you have uh, Karloff, the Organ People Alliance. That's crazy. So this is how uh, this all breaks down in this dystopian future. This is a good book. If, if you're looking for something new to read and... You have, you know, I think us comic book collectors, we're always looking for something new. 
Geiger is worth your money. I enjoyed this book. I didn't think I would, and I did go check it out.